Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is the fifth part of the unsupervised fault detection series. Today we are going to talk about how we can use recurrent neural network to be specific long short term memory based anomaly detection. So let's start. So this is the basic structure. So this is the basic structure of a recurrent neural network. So this is our data set. This is our data set that we are concerned with, which is uh, basically the Tennessee Eastman process data set where we have 12 sensor data. These are uh, these are all uh, sensor, the name of the sensor data. So we are going to divide it into sequences. How we are going to do? So this, suppose we want for three sequence at a time. That means one, two, three, this will be our input. So this will go to the first one, this will go to the second one, this will go to the third one and my output will be the last one. So this will be my last output. So this will be a problem called multi input single output problem. And then this will and the next step it will it will this uh, three will be my input and this one will be output. So, so this window will keep on moving as long as we go to the last. So in the last case, so what we'll have, like we have this three as our input and this last one will be the output that we will like to predict. So LSTM based alumni detection. So this is the structure of an, uh, the LSTM we are going to follow where we have multiple input one, two, three. And finally we have the output. So we will give it, it we will give it uh, the input data from T minus one instances and we want to predict the tth instance. This is also called as the autoregressive task. So let's see for example. So suppose for the first instance, this is our input data and this is our output. So the first input data will go to x1, second x2 and the last one will be go to xt and the final one will be our output. We we'll like to predict that. And we are going to train this neural network only on the normal or fault free data. So uh, here is our fault free data, which we have uh, done some pre processing, such as uh, now we have W, an extra dimension, which means that uh, suppose W is equal to 3, that means we have three previous data points, each having 52 sensor values. And N is the total number of samples. We, this will be our input and our output will be the value of sensor data at t plus one instant. So it will be uh, n cross 52 uh, dimension vector. Once we, so th this is how we are going to train our LSTM model. One, it is trained on fault free data. Suppose we get a faulty data, uh, which is a red color, which is given here in red color. And we pass it through the training, uh, the trained, trained LSTM model. And our output will be, let's say y hat, it will be significantly different compared to the actual y value, the actual y value we have, because this anomalous data set is out of the distribution. So as this mean squared error will be very high between the predicted one and the actual one, we can say, okay, this is uh, an anomalous behavior. And that's how we can do fault detection. Now with that know the overall process of what we are going to do, jump into the code and see how it has been implemented. First we'll import the libraries, then the data set, then we'll concatenate the fault free and faulty data set. In the next step, this is important. I'm scaling the, my entire, all the feature because a uh, different feature here, this one, this uh, sensor value, this sensor value have very different range. So this is not good for neural network training. Hence, I'm going to scale them to a similar range. For that, I'm initializing a standardization standard scaler. I'm saving that as SC. Then I'm using that SC to fit transform on my fault-free data. So this SC will contain the mean and standard deviation of this 52 sensor, which we can which I can use in the later stage to do a transformation whenever I need. All right and then pre-process the data using sliding window. So I created a function. What it will do is it will divide the entire data set. So suppose I'm uh, considering for fault number zero and uh, simulation run one, then I'll have 500 samples and I want to divide that 500 samples into small segments of window length. This function will do that. 
for that it will first initialize my input x and my output y a empty list then it will arrange then it will iterate through uh, all the elements so it will go from 0 to length of the data frame that i have given minus w which is my window length which i need to specify and s is the stride how many data set i want to jump and then i'm going to index from ith sample to i plus w sample the range will be my input and the last sample i plus w sample will be my output and then i'm just going to append that on my list finally i'm converting them into uh, array and returning them after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, initialize the value of window length and the stripe where in this case i'm taking 10 and 10 then i'm going to initialize two empty list where x fault free will be my input data for the entire fault free scenario and y free will be the corresponding y value or the t plus one variable for the entire uh, fault free scenario so uh, i in range 1 to 500 this loop means i'm going from i'm going for each simulation then transform that using the using the sci already got from here the standard scalar value i already got from here i'll transform that so this is just an uh, numpy array now then i am calling my function sliding window i'm giving it the data set dfs the value of window length the value of stripe so it will give me the corresponding x values and y value the sliding window method then i'm going to append them in my fault free data for each simulation run and i'll do it 500 times for entire simulation run of the fault free data and finally i'm converting the list into a numpy array i'm reshaping it so that it will have the desired shape i want i i want shape n cr cross w cross 52 for the x and uh, n cross uh, 52 for the y uh, this minus one automatically adjusts the required dimension so if i go on and see what is the shape of my x fault free it will be it's the total number of samples i have each sample is um, 10 time steps and each time step has 52 dimensions then i want to do train test split where x uh, will be x fault free y fault free i'm taking 20 percent of my data as my testing so my x train has uh, 19,000 samples and y train has the rest i think four or five thousand samples next comes the part of constructing the neural network so in this case i constructed two neural networks one is cnn model and another is lstm model in my experience lstm model worked way better so let's focus on that you can also try along with this uh, cnn model so these are two functions which you can just call to construct the uh, the entire neural network model so let's focus on the lstm model where the input is the x train we need this just to get the shape of the neural network in the first we'll in initialize the input layer where our shape will be x train dot shape and x train dot shape 2 this means this two the first will be the time instance and uh, the dimension of each variable after that we'll create a lstm layer with uh, 64 neurons and return sequence equal to 2 because this is basically stacked LSTM layer. The output from the first LSTM layer will go to the second one. And uh, then after the second LSTM layer, there, there we got the output layer, which where the activation is linear and uh, where the shape is x train dot shape to this means the 52 samples length we need. Then just we are going to create the model using the input uh, layer and decode it, compile it, and there you go, it's ready. In the next step we are going to train the deep learning model and uh, first i'm creating a early stopping callback to avoid overfitting and i'm saying i'm going to monitor the validation loss for five steps if it does not decrease then i'm going to stop the training and that will be my uh, result the best fit result i'm creating the deep learning model using the function that i just created lstm model here this one and uh, next i'm fitting the model here x train y train is my training and validation x test y step and finally i'm plotting the learning curve
well now the training is over this is the uh, training curve we get we see that the there is a very slight difference between validation and training so just when our model tried to overfit the early stopping kicked in and it stopped the training process let's see the visualize the reconstructed data uh, so what i am doing so in the first case i'm obtaining the I'm obtaining the normal data set for a for a certain um, simulation run it can be anything between 1 to 500 next I'm transferring I'm transforming that or standardizing them using the uh, scalar I already I, le I already learned from the fault free data then I'm using my function that I created sliding window to split this data into small segments I'm using my trained model DL model to predict on this X which will be saved in Y pred and the next and then what I'm doing I'm just plotting the value of Y and the value of Y pred which is my Y is the actual value and Y pred is the reconstructed value and here we can see I'll just run this again and yeah after running it, we can see that uh, well, the model reconstruction is pretty good in some cases. So here you can see it's pretty good, but some cases it's extremely bad, like this. Some 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 sensor value it is very well able to reconstruct follow the uh, given path, but some cases it's like extremely bad. Well, now let's see how the performance looks like. I'm creating a function called reconstructed reconstruction loss. Well, my input will be the trained neural network, the X and the actual value y so first i will predict the output using the neural net the neural network and the the neural network and the input x and then i'm just going to obtain the mean squared error between y and y pre so that will be my reconstruction error that i'm doing for all the uh, fault free scenario so first i'm creating the instance fault free reconstruction loss then i'm for then I'm just looping through 1 to 100. We can do it for 500 as well. Just because it was taking a lot of time, I did it up to 100. I'm obtaining the fault free data set for each simulation run, transforming that, obtaining the sliding window. Then I'm using the function I created recon loss, my trained deep learning model, the x temp and y temp value to obtain the reconstruction loss. And then I'm just appending that to this list, this empty list. And finally, I'm converting that to NumPy array of one dimensional, uh, one dimensional shape. And finally, I'm just putting a histogram of that. Well, this is how the uh, histogram of the reconstruction loss for the fault free case looks like. Then I'm going to obtain. So I, I now I want to threshold this. So I'll take somewhere here as my threshold. If the value, if the reconstruction loss is higher than this, then I will flag it as an anomaly. All right. So I'm just obtaining the mean and standard deviation of the reconstruction loss and mu plus three sigma is my threshold. Let's run this. So 1.259 is what I got my threshold as. Then using that threshold, using that threshold, I'm just plotting the mean squared, the reconstruction loss obtained for a different fault scenario from fault zero to 25. And this is how it looks like. Uh, For fault number zero, most of the cases are under the threshold, which is a good thing. For fault number one, also we can see uh, as soon as the fault was introduced, it went above the th threshold, and we can see there is a fault. Same for fault two. But fault three, we, it does not go beyond the threshold, so we cannot detect fault three. Yeah. For some fault, it is very accurately detectable, but whether uh, but for some other faults, it's like pretty difficult. So we'll, we'll obtain the F1 score matrix, the average F1 score matrix for all the four. We'll just run this one. Yeah. So finally, we obtained an uh, average F1 score of five, 0.575 and an accuracy score of 0.708 on the entire, on the entire uh, data set for each type of fault. So till now, we have saw that even though we are using uh, very sophisticated deep learning algorithms, still we are not able to surpass the performance of 
बेसिक स्टैटिस्टिकल मेथड 